Sustainability is another issue. And I'm talking about water, yes. I'm talking about global warming, yes. I'm talking about just about everything associated with this word. Whatever your views are about the science, remember the future is not about the science of global warming. It's about emotion. emotion. The science of global warming is a guess about what may happen to our world in 2050. And by the way, we will never know. Because we are already taking action, by the time we get to 2050, we will probably have changed a little bit what the carbon dioxide level would otherwise have been. So we will never know what would have happened in 2050 if the level had risen to that point. And historians will go on debating that with scientists for a thousand years more. I am convinced that global warming is related to human activity in part, and that carbon dioxide story is very important in it, vital. But even if I'm wrong, and there's debate about it, even if this graph of carbon dioxide and temperature going back over 450,000 years, even if it is wrong, we know the future. We know that there is already passion about this issue. Put your hands up if you think that the amount of emotion attached to global warming will go on increasing over the next five years around the world. Put your hands up. Three years ago, you could hardly find a world leader talking about this issue. Now you can hardly find one that doesn't talk about it every week. And this is an example of emotion changing. The science has changed a little, but not very much. It's emotion attached to science which is driving global warming. And you can be sure that hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars of euros will be spent on innovation in this area. Global warming represents the biggest new business opportunities of this millennium so far. We're talking about potentially $40 trillion of innovation that will be sold in new products and services by companies over the next 35 years. And with it comes other issues as well, whether it's a threat of uh, rising water in Bangladesh or other things. And you hear a lot about companies becoming carbon neutral. In five years' time, I think it will be difficult to hold an event like this without making the entire event carbon neutral as a matter of, uh, not a matter of choice, which will mean that all the energy that you use, including the power in this projector, will be, will be, will be um, calculated, and then an amount will be donated to um, something like the World Wildlife Fund so that it can be invested in projects, probably mainly in emerging countries, to make viable uh, ways of saving carbon elsewhere that are not quite viable at the moment. So it, are you, it's, a, it's a project which would be fine with a 20% extra subsidy. Then suddenly it can work. Suddenly, a thousand more households stop burning oil or gas. They stop using coal and they start running off water power or something like that. And in the energy market, you will continue to see massive distortion as there has been for the last 35 years. Um, and, uh, let me give you an example of how emotion and science conflict or get confused. The United States and the European Union decides that biofuels is the answer to global warming or part of the answer. To burn food in cars is a great idea, they say. And within a few weeks, we have 20 million acres lost in America of farming and 33% of the corn crop last year was put into vehicles to be burnt. What a wonderful idea, you might say. Uh, by 2010, 5% of all the fuel in this part of the world will also come from burning up fuel. Straight away, we have food price rises. Or is it just a coincidence? Who knows? The UN thinks that up to 70% of this rise is coming from biofuels policy. But remember, the future is not about truth or science. It's about emotion. And even if they are wrong, if that 70% is believed, it will cause a problem. Another problem is the fact that one billion people today are hungry, not that hungry, but hungry, and another 500 million are overweight, some of them in the same countries. And that is why we now have 33 nations threatened with food insecurity. And what that means is riots. And these are some of them. 
And why do people riot over food? Not just because they are angry. I said 300 million people in China were moving from rural areas to cities, which is partly how the rural areas change, actually. It's through rural migration into cities, those populations transform, they then go back, some of them go back, with new values and processes and technologies and transform their, their rural communities. And that's happening all over the world. But when you arrive and you lose your land and you arrive in a city and you live in a slum, 80% of all you earn is spent buying rice or corn or something because you have no land now. For the first time, you are in the food market. So if food prices go up by 100%, then straight away you are hungry. So what do you do? Well, the answer is you eat less so your children can eat. When the food prices go up again by another 25%, you know what you do? You start selling your pots and pans. You sell your cooker. You sell everything that you have to buy food. You liquidate your assets to feed your children. And when your assets have gone, what do you do then? The following week, you go out on the streets. The following week, you start picking up bricks and you throw them through the window of a food shop to feed your family. The following week, you turn a vehicle over, you take petrol and you light it and you burn it. The following week, you riot on the streets, my friends, and that is why we have seen these things happen all over the world. This is not just a political protest. These are issues of survival. So does biofuel policy matter? Oh, yes, it does. When I was talking to the Pentagon about ways to prevent future conflict, does it matter that you have a policy that takes ethanol out of, uh, uh, produces ethanol from sugar, or for the European Union the same? It may do. Even if the science is wrong, even if the UN are wrong, that the food prices are not related to this at all. But if the public perception is that, that's what will happen. So, and look at this statement here. The UN, this is the, this is the UN's own statement. The United States and the European Union have taken a criminal path by contributing to explosive rise in global food prices through using food crops to produce biofuels. Hmm. Emotion. So what's going to happen to biofuel policy? Dead. What's going to happen to turning food into fuel? It's finished. What's going to happen in five years' time if you've invested a whole load of money this year to build a huge factory for it? You're out of business. Will we have biofuels? Of course we will. They'll be made from things like the cooking oil that was used in this hotel. Yes, put it into a diesel engine to drive a bus. Great. Uh, use uh, some of the crop which you cannot eat. Yes. But don't convert food into fuel. So I'm just giving it as an example of how emotion can change in less than 24 months and how government policy can be transformed. And you find one policy replaced by another when single issues rule. And so that is why the world is becoming so radical. Okay, um, I'll skip these other things to do with. We'll see, and you're going to see amazing technologies to rebalance our energy, uh, whether it's geothermal, uh, street lighting, which itself will reduce 3% of every country's electricity bill in the West, um, and so on. 